This video is going to be on the common network utilities that you would use as a system administrator. The utilities we'll be discussing in this video are Ping, Telnet, Netstat, Traceroute, Dig, NSLOOKUP, and Whois. So first let's talk about Ping. When using Ping you'd use it to see if your remote host or local host is available and up and running for you to use. For instance the way you would use it is just by typing the word Ping followed by the domain name or IP address that which you are trying to test. So let's do ping at f ping to frankthprogrammer.com. Press enter. And you'll see that it's sending packets and receiving information about each of those packets. So let's close that. Now you'll see it transmitted nine packets, received those nine packets, and zero packets were lost. And it gives you some extra information as far as what was the fastest time, the average time, the longest time, and the standard deviation between each time. Now you can also use various flags on ping which make it a lot more useful, such as the dash C flag. So when you do ping dash C, you would then declare the number or account of how many pings you want to send, so how many packets you want to send over the network. So let's say we only wanted to send five packets. Then we would put a space followed by the domain name or IP address. So frankthprogrammer.com. And then press enter. And you see that it will send five packets and return a summary of the information that was sent and received. So in this one we sent five packets, received those five packets, and zero packets were lost. Which is good. Another useful flag that you can use is the dash I for interval. So we would use that like this, ping dash C, let's send three packets this time. Let's put the dash I flag a number for a time. So let's say we wanted to do five seconds. What would happen is it would take a five second break between each ping. So let's go ahead and ping frankthprogrammer.com. And you'll see the first packet sent instantly. Then five seconds after the second one would be sent. And then the third one shortly after. Now, just as a note, ping can actually be blocked by remote hosts, so it doesn't always work, but it is a good first test to see if your remote host is actually up and running. The next utility we'll be discussing is Telnet. Now, with Telnet, you can actually use it to log into remote systems, view files, or run various commands, different things that you but for us we would just use it to test the actual port or service to see if it's actually up and running and available to us to use for instance let's say we wanted to see if Apache was running we'd check on port 80 or if we wanted to see if SSH is available we would check port 22 so let's go ahead and write telnet and let's test for port 80 to see if Apache is up and running for frankthprogrammer.com so we'd telnet to the domain name followed by the port number Now you'll see we don't have Telnet installed in this case, so let's do a yum search for Telnet. And give it a second. And you'll see it return a few packages, but the one we want is just simply called Telnet. So let's go ahead and install that. Yum y install Telnet. Let's log in as root. Yum dash y install telnet. And just give it a second to run through the processes. It's now installing, so it shouldn't be too much long. There we go, now it's complete, so let's go ahead and try to use it. So we'll do telnet, followed by the domain name, followed by the port we wanted to test, which was port 80. Press enter. And you see that it actually connected to frankthprogrammer.com, and it's given us a space to actually run some commands. So I'm going to just close this, control C. And let's go ahead and try on port 22 now. 
So we'll do telnet followed by the domain name at port 22. And you see it will attempt to connect. Now on this, on this, on port 22 I actually have it blocked so it won't actually connect. But let's see what it does. And you'll see it actually timed out trying to connect. So and it's trying the next IP. So let's go ahead and cancel that because we know it's going to fail anyways. And that's pretty much what we would use Telnet for, just to test to see if an available service or if a service is available to us. The next utility we'll be discussing is Netstat. Now with Netstat, it'll allow you to view the uh, various connections like printer connections or print network connections, your routing tables, your interface statistics, and various other information. So let's go ahead and print out everything that Netstat would have, which is Netstat-A. And this will return all of our Unix listeners, our UDP port listeners, as well as our TCP port listeners. So let's go ahead and just, let's say we want to extract the TCP listeners. We would just do netstat, followed by the T for TCP and L for listeners. In doing that, you'll see that we are return the TCP listeners for our system, which we don't have too many. And you'll see that it's actually, instead of providing an IP address, it's given us the actual host name resolution for the IP. But let's say we wanted to suppress it and just return the IP addresses. We could do that by typing netstat and uh, ntl, ntl. So now let's press enter. And you'll see that we'll return the IP addresses. Now when suppressing the name, the actual host name resolution, it'll, it, it'll actually run the pr command a lot faster since it doesn't actually have to look it up and get the information through our gateway. Now instead of TCP listeners, let's say we wanted to view your UDP listeners. To do that we would just type netstat dash n, instead of a T we would use U and then L. And you'll see that we're supplied a list of our UDP listeners on the system, the IPs and the corresponding ports. Now if you weren't sure what port went with which process on your system, for instance, let's say we wanted to know what 5353 was assigned to, we could actually do that as long as we're logged in as root. If we're logged in as root, we could just add the dash P flag, and that would let us know what the program names are. So let's press enter, and you'll see that each of the program names are listed. Let's go ahead and zoom out so you can see the list more clearly. run that command again and you'll see for each port it's letting you know which service is actually listening on that port so we have cups D on port 631 for UDP and let's say we wanted to do it for the TCP listeners as well we could just change that U to a T and you'll see it gives us a list of our TCP listeners with the corresponding programs now with NetSet it's also useful to view your routing table so we could view our routing table by just typing netstat dash r for routing and you'll see that it gives us our routing table and it shows us what our default gateway is and you can see that it's our default gateway by the flag g which is used here under flags let's zoom back in now let's say we wanted to suppress the host name resolution and see the actual IP addresses we can just add the dash n flag so netstat dash rn and that would give us the IP address for our gateway so you'll see we're actually using this IP to actually connect we're going through this IP to connect to the internet and this is also defined in our etsy resolve.conf file so if we just go go ahead and view the contents of that cat etc resolve.com you'll see that our name server is actually defined here which is our default gateway the next tool we're going to be talking about is traceroute now with traceroute you can actually view the path that your packet or the data you're sending over the internet is taking to get to its destination 
So let's reset the screen. And let's type trace route. Now you can actually supply it an IP address or a domain name. We're just going to use a domain name. And let's press enter. And you'll see it'll go through the various hops. Starts from your default gateway, which we discussed earlier. And then goes out to the internet service provider and jumps around, if, jumps to each of these hops until it reaches our destination at Cloudflare. Now you could also give it an IP address, so let's go ahead and get the IP address for our domain for frankthaprogrammer.com. We'll just do ping-c for one count at frankthaprogrammer.com. And you'll see we're given this IP, so let's go ahead and copy this out. And let's do trace route. And let's paste in the IP. Press enter. And you'll see it goes through the exact same steps, leaving your default gateway until it hits its until it hits its destination. The next tool we want to talk about is NS Lookup. Now with NS Lookup, as well as dig, it's actually used to find DNS information or to see if your host name to your host name resolves to the IP and the reverse resolution as well. So let's go ahead and start with NS lookup. And we would use it by just typing NS lookup followed by the domain name. So let's say frankthaprogrammer.com. You'll see it gives us each of the IPs related to our DNS records as well as what gateway we use to get to these IPs, to get to this information. Now this information is provided through this gateway, so the information may display differently based off of your provider. So the next tool that we're going to want to talk about, which is used a lot more, more widely than NSLOOKUP, is DIG. Now with DIG you can check also on an IP address or on the domain name itself. And you can also extract like various records, let's say you only wanted to view your MX records or your A records. We would use dig by just typing dig, let's clear this screen, and let's type dig, followed by let's say the domain name. So we'll do frankthaprogrammer.com. And you'll see in this it gives us our information with the default, which it shows as the A, A records. And it lets you know what server you left from, so what gateway did we go through to get this information. Now let's say we wanted to view the MX records for this system, uh, for this domain. We would just type dig, followed by the domain name, followed by the, the letters MX for MX records. And this would give us the MX records for that domain. So you'll see frankthaprogrammer.com has the MX records of mx1.emailserver.com and mx2.emailserver.com. Now we can also do a reverse lookup based off the IP address. So let's do dig. Now we would need to supply the dash x flag followed by the IP. So let's paste that in there. And let's press enter and it will do a reverse lookup. And you'll see it gives you the information about some information about the IP. And it looks like it resolves or at cloudflare.com. Lastly, the last tool we want to speak, uh, talk about is the Whois. Now, the Whois is very useful when trying to figure out like ownership information about a particular domain or information about a particular IP address. You would use it by just typing Whois followed by the domain name or the IP address. So let's say we wanted to find out more information about the owner or DNS records as well that it's pointing to for frankthaprogrammer.com. And we would need to see, so we need to install Whois first. So let's just do a yum search for Whois. And you'll see it's actually a part of a package called jwhois. So let's go ahead and install that. Give it a second.
And now that we have it installed, we can type who is, followed by the domain name, frankthaprogrammer.com. And then you'll see it, it gives us some information regarding that domain. As far as the registrant, which is Frank Perez, who we registered the domain through, so it was registered through GoDaddy. The administrative contact for this domain, we also get the technical contact information as well as the DNS records that the domain is pointing to. So in this case we're pointing to Cloudflare. Now let's say we wanted to find out more information on a particular IP address. We could just do who is followed by the IP address. So let's paste it in there. Press enter. And you'll see it gives you some ownership information about this IP address. So let's roll up, uh, scroll up and you'll see the Owner's name is Cloudflare Inc. Gives you the address information that the IP was registered to, as well as when the registered date was and when it was last updated.